So, hey, Greg, how are you doing today? Great, Don. Thanks for asking yourself. Yeah, we're good. We're all good out here. We actually got uh, the, the weather's been crazy. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had, you know, this huge northerly wind coming in, blowing, you know, minus 15 degrees, which is really, really cold for us. I mean, the people from Winnipeg think that's balmy weather, but uh, we, we've been, we had minus 15 for a couple of days and, and now we got plus 11. We're probably going to go up to plus 12 today. You know, oh, good for 15. you. So it's, uh, it, but we have an atmospheric river. So you remember a couple of years ago, our, our, we flooded and I guess we're on flood watch again. So oh. th- there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to, to the warmer weather and to El Nino. But right at the moment we have, uh, it's not a bad day out there, but we're oh, good. We'll, 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 we'll take, we'll take what we get. Yeah. No, the weather's been, uh, been a little on the mild side here as well, but not quite 11 degrees, but two or three. So not too bad. It was it was pretty cold here and we had a lot of snow, but it's all gone pretty well now. So yeah, and it's still January, right? right. <laughs> which is which is right. unusual. And I mean, here we get we can have weird weather in January. That's that's not uncommon for us to get warmer weather in January. People like that sometimes that move from Ontario or the prairies because especially golfers because they they say always want to golf in January but in Winnipeg when it's 50 below you're not going to go golfing in January right <laughs> but but in British Columbia you can do that sometimes but you might get wet you know because it's pouring pouring rain so yeah but, yeah uh, no it's been pretty good here I can't complain I mean we had a, we had a bout of cold weather but it was only like a week or two and we got some snow and and that was pretty well it so today we're going to continue our uh, exploration of John Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And we're going to take law number seven, you know, the law of design where we maximize our growth, you know, and I think that I like this law because it, it just kind of brings the other laws together, you know, particularly the law of intentionality. You know, you can be intentional about having personal growth, but if you don't design it, if you don't design your, your growth or if you don't design what you're doing, you're not going to get anywhere, right? So all these all these laws they all they all build on one on one another, and so I think the idea is that growth doesn't just happen. You know, it has to be designed. So how 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 would you what do you think of the law of design, Greg? And and uh, you know, would you want to add to that point? You know, that 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 growth doesn't just happen. Well, it doesn't. But I think I think where people get caught up is they sometimes think think that it does. They read a book or two or or talk to a couple of people or listen to a couple of people that it just happens. But the importance of having a well thought out plan is a very important thing, I think, for for anyone who wants to get somewhere in life. And if we're if it as it pertains to sales, for example, you know, Maxwell is really good at talking about intentionality. And in in this chapter, as you know, intentional growth is is one of the main factors for what he talks about. And I think it's right. I think that we have to seek out as individuals, we have to seek out uh, opportunities to improve ourselves. And that's an intentional thought. And if you really think about it, intentionality is really a well thought out plan that ensures our success as sales professionals or people just wanting to grow and develop themselves. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a, it's a very important part of getting to where you want to go in life. Yeah. And we could, and we could break that down even further when we say, okay, it's, it's important to, you know, to be intentional and to have a design and have a plan, but we need to, before we can actually plan things, we know that we need to know what our resources are. You know, I, I think that, you know, when you're when you're going to build a house, you have a, a blueprint, but you also have to have uh, you also have to have a list of, of the different products that you're going to need to complete the house. You know, like I think in, and when we relate that to designing our our plan, our growth plan, I think it's important for us to recognize what our strengths are. You know, what do you do well? You know what, and then also recognize what you're, what you don't do well. You know, like do a SWOT analysis on on who you are, and you know what skills have you, you know what skills have you acquired over your long, long, long life. For me, anyway, 
not, so, not, <laughs> not long enough yet. But you know, what 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 are the particular attributes? You know, we talk about attributes and when we talk about personality styles and that, because some styles have different different types of attributes. You know, like for a salesperson. If you're if you're an outgoing I type of personality or a D type of personality where you just want to overcome obstacles, you're you're trying to control your environment. You know where a a C or an S type salesperson wants to be more strategic and and maybe be more supportive. You know in their roles. So understanding what your strengths are is going to be very very important in in developing your design. You know I think about prospecting. I'm not going to pick up the phone and make a whole bunch of phone calls because that's not my personality style. You know, I'm going to have to come up with something else because I still have to prospect, right? So understanding ourselves is a, is a big part of, of designing something that's going to work for us. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're, you're a hundred percent correct. I think that, you know, apart from us figuring out ourselves, then we have to move forward and try to acquire new skills. You know, we have to put ourselves in a position of success, right? So we have to figure out, you know, what these things that we need to do what we need to do. I mean, that's the, the biggest point here is I think when we look at where we want to go, we, we teach this in some of these courses is when we look at where we want to go, who are we today and who do we have to be in order to get there? And we really have to hone in on what what is our intentional growth look like and how intentional are we continuous learning is another thing right it's it's any well thought out plan of growth has to be through learning something new or be or at least willing to look at what we need to figure out for ourselves right and in order to move forward so sale i think i think sales need to stay informed about about what is actually happening in their own industry. And as individuals, we need to understand where we're going in order to do that. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting, you know, the continuous learning thing is 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 an important factor, I think, in, in our growth and in, in our design. Some people don't like the idea of learning because they think that we're asking them to read a whole bunch of books. but we're not asking them to do that. You know, there's so many different ways of learning today, like you, you know, with the access to podcasts, the access to YouTube videos. I yep. mean, if you want to learn, if you want to learn how to, how to fix the plumbing in your bathroom, all you got to do is turn on YouTube and search for how to fix my plumbing in my bathroom and you'll get all kinds of do it yourselfers. And then unfortunately for me, I actually think I can do the work and then I try it and then I have to call a plumber to fix what I've wrecked. You know, when I, when I've done it. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, there's lots of information out there, but you got to recognize that's when it comes, you've done an inventory on yourself, say, okay, what is it that I know how to do and, you know, and, and I'm good at, like, do I have the uh, aptitude to be a plumber? No, I don't. But do I have the aptitude to, you know, to um, sell houses somewhat? Yeah, I do. You know, so rec knowing knowing yourself, I think, is a big part of, of, yeah. uh, of coming up with a good design. It is. It is for anything we do. Yeah, it's, it's like it, it's it's like you know, using that plumber analogy. It's it's aligning your roles with your strengths. Yeah. Okay. You know, doing handy work isn't isn't one of my strengths. You know, so I, I gotta I gotta know that. And when I when I need something fixed around my house, I I know that. I'm not the guy to fix it, you know, so I'm going to have to call somebody, you know, but when it comes to working on my computer or doing something like that, then, then I'm, you know, that, then I'm, then I'm, that's more in my, in my, in my strengths, it's more in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important knowing that. And I think, I think goal setting, it sort of sets you up for goal setting because if you understand who you are and you're, you're learning the things that you need to do and you're intentional about it, that's when you can start setting out a really clear plan as to how you want to proceed and where you want to go and being adaptable is part of that, right? Yeah. 
I think it's also important for us to to recognize what our resources are. I was before we came on on the call, before we hit the record button on this, we were talking about uh, a note note taking app that that I had been using for years and years and years, and I'm not going to tell you who it is, I guess, but because I'll be polite. But uh, I, I was really frustrated with them because they 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 were recently sold to a different uh, a different company, and you know they've changed their the way they interact with their clients. And they've made it very difficult for me now to access my notes. I have 5,000 notes on, in this in this note-taking app. So I, I found another one, which I will talk about. It's called, it's what's it called? <laughs> it's called Ample Note. <laughs> and, and Ample Note is a different idea. And, bec- and I think that it totally goes in with, you know, if you're, if you're looking for a tool, uh, Ample Note is a, is a design. What it, what it is, is, is it doesn't just a place to take notes but it wants to take your ideas and help you flesh out your ideas in a, in, a, in a larger note and then add a task to it so that you actually implement, you know, what you're going to do, you know, and then you have, and then you end up with a result. You know, I think it's so easy for us to build, like, I, I don't know how many times, you know, I've been to a, or done a, a business planning uh, course and you come up with this great plan you know, or, or strategy or design, if you will, but then it goes in the drawer and nobody does anything and you don't do anything with it. You know, you have to actually work your plan, you know, like plan your work and work your plan. And, and, you know, you're going to design a successful career. Well, I think what happens is people typically will work out their plan and they get to that point and then they go, okay, well, you know, I've worked out the next steps. I'll just take a break. And that break turns in from, from one hour to, to a day, to a week, to a month, to a year. <laughs> they still haven't done anything. Well, you're right. That's a good, that's a good way to put it. It's, it's, there's so many apps out there these days that you can use that will help organize yourself. And that sounds like a good one. But yeah, it, 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 what it basically comes down for us human beings is not only building the plan, but the most important part is taking action on it, right? Yeah, and, yeah. You have to, you have to. The, the design is only part of it. And that's that's where you have to implementation. So, yeah. No, that's a good point, and I'm glad you brought it up because I think that is typically where people fail. You know, it's all about awareness. So we become aware that there are things that need to change. We try and make these changes, and we we map them out. We make a. We, we understand ourselves, we start to understand others, we make a map, we do a process, and then the next step is obviously taking action on that. The taking action on that is the most important part. You can take action on, on building it, that doesn't mean you're going to implement it or execute upon the functionality of that. And that's where, that's really the most important part. Yeah. Right? And- and, and I think those two, those two things of building and, and taking action, those are going back to our, our personality profiles. A personality style like mine might be more interested in designing the plan and perfecting it, you know, and, but not, and not putting it into action because it's not perfect yet. And put into action is better than is better than perfect you know done is better than perfect you know yeah. so you that's cannot a, that's wait. a hold on one second that is a valuable lesson in and of itself right there is what you just said what did i just say <laughs> it's 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 just <laughs> not being perfect you got to start it even if it's okay. not perfect and that's good because that's what typically stalls people out is they think, oh, I've got to tweak it here. Oh, I got to tweak it a little more. That's not quite the way I want it. Doesn't matter. Get it out there. Start it. Start it with one wheel on instead of four. Just get the yeah. thing going. Yeah, as long as it, you know, it might might wobble a little bit to begin with, but eventually it's going to, you know, you're going to tweak it as you go along. Yeah. So I think if you, I think if you initiate your plan, start it. And then after a week or two, you know, or, or a month or whatever time, limit, you know, whatever, it dep- it's going to vary depending on what type of, pro- you know, what, what you're applying it to. But after a, a period of time, you can go back and you can assess it. You can, des- you know, in your design, you should have some also some accountability factors, you know, that says, okay, this is going to be successful when I get this result. 
right? So that's, that's what I think the other important thing is, is that your design needs to have accountability. So it has to, you have to have a design, you have to have, you have to initiate your plan and you have to have accountability so that you know what your results are. And if your results, if you're not getting the results that you want, then you need to tweak it. You need to say, okay, what's working, what isn't working and what's going to be the, the, the result of, of tweaking, you know, are you going to, and, and oftentimes you don't have to make wholesale changes. You just need to maybe just do one thing di a little bit differently. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree 100%. I think, look, there's a lot of moving pieces to this, but the reality is this. I think that I think that mapping out the direction that you want to go in is extremely important, but being intentional about its outcome is, is another important part. Getting it going and taking action is also <laughs> one of the most important pieces to the puzzle. And Maxwell does a good job of talking about intentionality and mapping out the direction that, that we should take. But again, you know, I'm sorry, but it's true. I used to be one of those guys that like to wing it and, you know, fly by the seat of my pants. And I have to admit, I, I did have some success with that. But the reality is when I think back at those times, there was a plan. There was a plan to go forward. And let me tell you from experience, if you plan something out, you're far better to hit that target than you are just winging it or flying by the seat of your pants. I know there's going to be people on here who think, no, no, man, I've done that all my life. Well, look at your life in, in a very honest view and look at where you can be if you just plan things out and be intentional about getting there. That's, that's my sort of advice to that. Well, thanks, Greg, for your insights into that and that, that advice. It's been an interesting conversation. And I think just recommend again to people to, to pick up the book. Yeah. You know, it's 15 Invaluable Laws by John C. Maxwell. It's readily available at on, on Amazon, but see if you could find a used copy at a used bookstore too. Sure. Because it's been around for a long time. And I don't want to take it. In, I mean, John doesn't need the money anymore, does he? No, <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, so, so take advantage of, of uh, being thrifty, I guess. Is, yeah, is that's it. Plan, so. Anyway, uh, well, well, thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Don. We'll see you. Bye, everybody.